please welcome Helen Shaver. Hello, Meg. How are you? Cool, Nice to see you. Nice welcome. to be here. Congratulations on your film. I mean, just this idea of like on camera, behind the scenes, like you've cobbled together quite a career. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's been some cobbling. I like shoes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's well, and I've been, this is the first time in 10 years that I've gone in front of the camera. Right. I mean, you've done little stuff, right? But this is no, like a meaningful spot. This is the first time in 10 years I've gone in front of the camera. How does that, were you, I mean, what was like your anxiety level leading up to My, this? Well, once I, once I said I would do it, uh, I, I, I was cool with it. I mean, but it was a real push-pull thing, mostly about whether I wanted to deal with my own mortality. There's also this strange thing that happens to us, when, and Johnny Carson went through this as well, when you're on camera for a long time and then you're not for a long time, then there's the whole vanity idea and then putting yourself back out oh, there God. and just reappearing. <laughs> a, not feeling the way you did the last time you are on camera and not looking the way you did the last time you are on camera. Yeah. Did you consider any of that? Of course. And in fact, one of the reasons I shifted from being in front of the camera was because of the mirrors, because of those makeup rooms that you sit in and, yeah. and people go, you know, a, a DP going, oh, no. You know, can, you go, you really shift your oh, day. Oh, you just go, it. oh, my God, oh, my God. But the thing about this character was not, it wasn't the vanity of, for me, the real challenge was, could I do what I ask my actors to do? Right. Because when I, when I direct you, I, I let you do your thing, and I see what I see, which is beyond that. And I invite it, I cajole it, I demand it, I seduce it, I, I wait for it. I ask you to come and give me you. Mm -hmm. I want you, right? I, I, I don't want your your, you acting like yourself. I want you, which is what you do on this show, and you get people to come and sit in these chairs, mm -hmm. which, by the way, are going away, which I think is No, really... they're coming to my house. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> no, but we don't get to see people in them anymore. I'm really yeah. glad I got here before I'm, they went I'm away, by the did. way. But, it, but so you've been able to kind of operate in a whole myriad of different ways of performing. You know, be, seeing the whites of the audience's eyes, being as disconnected from the audience as one could be. Yeah. Working with lots of great people. I'm sure working with people that you didn't get anything from. You know. Oh, yeah. yeah? I've been you, there. How did, how did you manage that? <laughs> well, you know, sometimes if you're acting opposite somebody you're not getting anything from, yeah. you pretend. Yeah. You know, exactly. and, and you pretend and you see, or you, or, or, you, or you just accept that that's the feelings that you have about those people and, 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 and let that inform the performance in its own way. I remember I did a film with somebody who's a great actor who but was a really, really awful human being. Like a really, really, really awful human being. Now, we're not going to name names. Okay, what but... does name rhyme with? <laughs> and, and, and I, you know, every day I'd go in there and, I, and, it's, and, and this man would start with just, mm, you know, like that. Really, really misogynistic, hideous mm -hmm. stuff, right? Right. And, and at the end, when they wrote the reviews, they said the chemistry between us was magnificent. Right. <laughs> and there was chemistry, right? It just was... Isn't that what sucks sometimes? The shit that you wish wouldn't work totally works? Yes, you know? well, yes. I mean, I was glad that it worked because, you know, in the end. But, but yeah, it's, it's, you, you don't want that person to be honored for that kind of behavior. But A Movie or TV series? Movie. No. <laughs> Just so I know all your work. I'm going through it in my head now. <laughs> Take a look at this clip from Dan. Okay. And all the rest of this crap, monotonous, boring crap is evil and damage. And if you don't, if you don't let it go, it's just gonna have a job. There is a lot of, like, it's one of those, depending on the kind of person you are, I watched it late at night, and I was feeling a little bit on that left side of down, mm. and I watched that film, and it was like, well, I don't know if I can compute this at this moment, because it can walk you through, and then there's that beautiful stuff at the end, but yeah. it's, it's heavy. When you went home at night, did you carry that? Like, really carry it? I really let myself, yeah, I mean, not the specifics of the scene, but I really, really did for the the time that I was shooting it, let myself be a woman who knew that she was dying really soon. 
the older one gets, at least in my estimation, that, and the Beatles were right, that love is all you need. Love is all you need. Because the rest sucks. The, well, and, and, and really when it comes down, I, uh, my, uh, I was married before. I mean, I've been married to my husband, who's the father of our son, for 26 years. And You were also with... Your I was, husband, as one as husband, passed away, right? I, I well, and I, I had my ex-husband, who I, had, you know, hadn't been married to for very, very many years, and he, yeah, he passed for about four years ago, and during that year, I was in LA a lot, and so, uh, you know, and he was a man who was very wealthy, and uh, because of his success, he he produced many, many, many great movies, and da, da, da. he was by himself. Yeah. Which I wanted to help him, you know, I wanted to give him comfort. And then I came to understand that that, that step over the threshold into the cottage of darkness, as Mary Oliver talks of it, is, is, has to be done by yourself. And, and, and all there is, is love. I mean, they're, they're not making that stuff up. That, they're, they're just telling the truth, right? right? All that good stuff is just the truth. Let's think about more with Helen Shaver right after this. Oh my god. I haven't seen this for a long time. Bye, Noel. Jimmy Brolin, man. It's the passage to hell. <laughs> wow. That dark cottage <laughs> in the Amityville Horror. Wow. You were in one of the most terrifying movies of its era. Well, and, and that's all before, I mean, the reason that's all played in a close-up, right, is because that's before CGI. Right. That director directed uh, Cool Hand Luke. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to work with some, like, Sam Peckinpah, um, when I was doing, uh, uh, whatever, Ast Osterman weekend, and he's, there was a scene where, uh, where she's gonna die, and she's a cocaine addict, and so on and so forth, and I said, well, I said, Sam, but if she's, if she's gonna die, we don't want her to die when, without having gone through, if she's just a mess, shouldn't she see herself for a minute, get it, and then we'll kill her, because then people will care? Right. And he goes, yeah, well, how are you gonna do that? I said, well, let me get coke all over my face in the mirror, and I'll see myself, and then, and then, and then I'll sing Jesus Loves Me. Oh. And, and like Jesus loves me. me. Yeah, so I, I looked up and I saw all the coke, and then tears came down through the coke, and then and then I started singing Jesus love me, and 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 we did it over and over again. And I said, can I do it one more time, Sam? And he goes, no, no, it's okay, Helen. He said, but you're like me. We live our lives and it's great, but between clap and cut, we live. We live. <laughs> girl. Down River now playing in Toronto and Vancouver. Then watch for it in your time. Helen Shaver, everybody, we'll be right back. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.